Thin rail at its core is just a universal mounting material. All of your products that you see inside of a control cabinet, power supplies, relays, terminal blocks, you name it, most of them can be mounted onto a din rail. My name is Eric Silvestri and I am the product specialist here at Phoenix Contact for our cabinet add-on products. What does DIN stand for? So DIN is not just something that was made up, it actually stands for the Deutsches Institut of Normung. That is the governing body that tests and certifies these rails. So you couldn't just throw a piece of metal in there and call it a DIN rail. It has to adhere to certain standards that fall under this, this DIN standard categories. How are they sized? The two main ones are NS3515 and 35 and a half. The first number, the 35, is the width of the product, so 35 millimeters. And then the second number is the height of the product. So for instance, this would be your 35 seven and a half. It's 35 millimeters wide, seven and a half millimeters tall. And then something like this would be your 35 15. So 35 wide, 15 millimeters tall. What are the most common types of DIN rail? Aside from the sizes perforated and unperforated, all that means is how it's mounted, basically. It comes down to preference, but the perforation you can see, there's various mounting holes so you could easily mount this however you would like in the cabinet. And then for unperforated, you would just drill the holes wherever you would need to mount it. I always have people ask me, should you use aluminum or steel thin rail? Like, is there a corrosion issue and what should we be concerned about there? When it comes to corrosion, the different types of metals are obviously a factor. There's not necessarily one versus the other is better. It comes down to preference. It comes down to weight. It comes down to price. An aluminum thin rail is going to be not as heavy as a stainless steel thin rail would be. So if you already have weight issues in your cabinet or something like that, you might want to look into an aluminum thin rail. And then when it comes to corrosion, there's what we called galvanized versus ungalvanized. When we galvanize it, we dip it into a dip and that prevents from galvanic corrosion. So if you're not familiar, galvanic corrosion is when two different types of metals come together. So if you think about the mounting feet on any of your products, they're typically going to be metal so that they actually get grounded to the DIN rail. Um, so if that's the case and you have dissimilar metals, it could produce some corrosion. So by having a galvanized will help to mitigate that. You never mentioned, what on earth is this? So I was saving this. So this is what Phoenix Contact patented called our raised rail. So as you can see here, it's much taller than all the other options. And what it basically is, is a NS35 seven and a half DIN rail that is now raised off of the back plane. So if you mount that in your cabinet, um, you then have any of the products that are mounted on it higher than than the rest. And I can see where this would really help me out in, you know, installing because so many times we've got some really tall wire duct where we got some heavy density. And so, yeah, I feel like I'm always reaching down in there trying to get the wires in. So I see a lot of uses for that. Mm -hmm. You said that Phoenix Contact has this raised rail patented. What about it is patented? The mounting holes. So okay. if you can see here, there's the square mounting holes on the top of the rail there. And what that does is it allows the user to easily mount this thin rail to the back plane. So you can get a screwdriver down through there to reach your screws that would then mount to the back plane. Okay. Yeah, and I can see where that would be an advantage because it would be really a pain to try to wrestle the screws here in the side of it. So very nice feature. Mm -hmm. And then the other thing we have is this hole here in the the raised part, and that allows you to feed your wires and route it correctly and cleanly to your wire duct. Now that we know how to mount our components in our cabinet, let's figure out how to organize the wires. Click here to follow us over there.